Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jamie. I'm the director of operations at Women and Children First Bookstore. Uh, we're so glad you're joining us for this virtual author panel celebrating the release of Menopause <laughs> Upside Down, a comic treatment. Uh, for this event, editor M.K. Zerwick, Zerwick will present a short video preview of the anthology, and then we'll chat with uh, contributors Juan Mance, Leah Jones, and Kathy Bean. Uh, we begin our virtual events as we begin our events in store with a land acknowledgement. Please join me in taking a moment to acknowledge that the land on which the bookstore stands is the occupied, unceded territory of the Peoria, Potawatomi, Miami, and Sioux people. We encourage you to learn more about land acknowledgements and about the rightful owners of the land where you are viewing tonight's event at native-land.ca. Thank you. Um, our bookstore is open for browsing currently 11 to 6 every day, uh, but you can still support us through our online store. We also have a full lineup of virtual events that you can check out on our website. Some logistical crowdcast information you might need to know. Uh, during the event, if you have a question for any of our contributors, you can use the Ask a Question box located at the bottom of your screen. And you can utilize the chat bar, which uh, looks like many of you are doing already, uh, to talk to one another. You can also buy a copy of Menopause by clicking the Buy a Book box um, underneath all of our faces. With that housekeeping out of the way, let's turn our attention to Menopause correctly up right <laughs> this time. Um, as a woman who is two months away from my 40th birthday, I'm not sure that I enjoyed reading about what I have <laughs> to look forward to, uh, but I certainly appreciate the way that this book destigmatizes and exposes so many of the secrets that we keep about menopause. I'm really excited to hear everyone talk about the process of creating their comics and the process of menopause. <laughs> um, tonight's panel is jam-packed. I'm going to just give one sentence bio so I can get out of the way and let these fabulous people talk. Um, M.K. Serwick is a nurse, cartoonist, educator, and the editor of Menopause, a comic treatment, our book for this evening. She was joined tonight by several contributors to the anthology. Awan Mance is a professor of African American literature at Mills College in Oakland, California, and a lifelong artist and writer. Leah Jones has a master's in health communication and has finally started that podcast she's been thinking about for three years. <laughs> and Kathy Leamy is a Boston-based medical cartoonist and a UX writer for Healthware Software. So thank you all for being here and I hope that you enjoy the event. MK, I think you might be on mute. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my God, well, if you had that square on your uh, bingo card, there you go. Um, I wanted to thank everyone for being here. It's really exciting to see everybody saying hi to one another in the chat. It just really bears witness to the uh, great community that that comics artists have and that graphic medicine has, and uh, we're really quite a wonderful community and I'm really grateful. Um, so the book, uh, in case you haven't been able to get your hands on it yet, it features 26 comics by 29 contributors because there are three collaborations. Um, and since we all could not be in the room together for a launch anyway, uh, we're gonna look at this as a silver lining of all the difficult things we've been going through is that we could find a way uh, to create an event where we can all be, uh, all be together. Um, so we want to kick the book launch celebration off with a little video uh, that we got, got even more people from the collection to get together and talk about it. Um, and then after the video, we're going to chat with Awan and Kathy and Leah about their uh, collaboration and Awan about uh, their work. So uh, without any further ado, let's uh, launch the video. Fingers crossed that this works. Okay, aha, application window, bear with. Hi, my name is MK Sherwood. I am a nurse, a cartoonist, and editor of the collection Menopause, a comic treatment. 
I wanted to edit this collection because it didn't exist. When I first started experiencing the symptoms of perimenopause, I felt very destabilized and disoriented and uninformed despite being a nurse. And so I turned to my medium of choice for information about health, comics. I work in the field of graphic medicine, which is uh, the intersection of comics and the discourse of health and body and how we uh, achieve care and how we give care and how we think about um, our bodies and our experiences with them. And so I thought, sure, that there would be some great stuff in comic form about menopause. But I was disappointed. It turned out that most of what I found okay. was a little bit. Hey, MK, I we can't see the video. Oh, that's what, that's it what I was It sounds great. We can yeah, hear, we it. hear it. There we go. Now we're seeing it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think it's because I went to full screen. So we're going to try it. We're going to start back and we're going to try it. I guess we'll just do it this way. You can see this full. Yep. Hi. My name is yep. Now I see it. I yeah, there we go. Cartoonist and editor of the collection Menopause, a comic treatment. I wanted to edit this collection because it didn't exist. When I first started experiencing the symptoms of perimenopause, I felt very destabilized and disoriented and uninformed despite being a nurse. And so I turned to my medium of choice for information about health, comics. I work in the field of graphic medicine, which is uh, the intersection of comics and the discourse of health and body and how we uh, achieve care and how we give care and how we think about um, our bodies and our experiences with them. And so I thought, sure, that there would be some great stuff in comic form about menopause. But I was disappointed. It turned out that most of what I found, the little bit that I found, was actually discouraging and demeaning and very judgmental. Uh, women are portrayed as a huge inconvenience to the people around them. Um, and uh, they were also this sense of being judged by other women for not engaging in uh, some questionable medical practices like uh, uh, taking your pills or having your surgery. Um, it just felt like a new collection was needed, one that um, didn't treat menopause as a joke, but actually changed the conversation and provided new images and new stories and new metaphors and new ways of thinking about this experience that half of humanity will go through. Definitely the goal of this was to challenge the stigma and to gather stories that hadn't been heard. I gathered the cartoonist to do this book through two communities that I'm a part of, the graphic medicine community and the queers and comics community. And the goal was to represent a full range of experiences, of professions, ages, um, reasons that, that bodies will go through the symptoms of menopause, uh, gender identities, sexual identities, and health states. So I wanted to have a wide range of experiences to show that this isn't a single story. There isn't a single story of a woman with hot flashes complaining, um, that menopause is much more complex and unexpected. Um, and for the cartoonists who are in this collection, some of them, this is the first comic they've ever made. Others have had a long, long, wonderful career of making amazing art. And some of them you've heard of, and some of them you haven't. And I was hoping that perhaps this could change that because you should know who all the cartoonists in this collection are. Um, the other thing I wanna say that's really important is that there are stories that aren't represented here because there are many more stories to be told. And I hope that you will pick up a pen and a piece of paper and consider drawing and writing in sequential form in comics about your experiences because every story deserves to be read and created and witnessed. I want to thank the contributors to this collection for their patience and their responsiveness and their willingness to be a part of it um, and for the amazing stories that they brought in their beautiful style. I want to thank Penn State University Press, especially Editor-in-Chief Kendra Boileau for believing in the possibility of this collection when it was just an idea. I hope that you'll enjoy this book. And that is enough for me. I want you to now hear from the real stars of this collection. Hi, I'm Linda Berry. This is my comic, uh, Menopositive. I'm just gonna read you the first page. 
Like a lot of kids, my ideas about certain things came from eavesdropping on adults like my grandma, my aunts, and their friends who were sitting around smoking and drinking coffee. So I'm listening to them. And one is saying, you know, the doctor took out her Baha'i Bata. I no go no. They say for some, this is better. So I knew Baha'i is house. Bata is a kid. So I say to my grandma, so she had a baby house inside of her? Stupid doll. It's not the baby house, it's the uterus. This was in the 1970s when a record number of women underwent hysterectomy, including my mother and many of my relatives. Menopause didn't happen in a natural way for them and everyone seemed to feel pretty good about not having a uterus, except for my grandma who wasn't into it. She said, God don't like it. He doesn't like hysterectomies, God don't like it. He don't like uterus? He's stupid though, God loves uterus. Sounds better in Tagalog. And then uh, the next day I went and uh, visited my white friends across uh, across the street and was telling them the news. And my uh, girlfriend says, who's uterus? And her mom goes, I'd appreciate it if you did not say uterus in my kitchen. Hi everyone, I'm Maureen Burdock and I'm so pleased to be part of this anthology. It's such a great project. I think the day that I got the email from MK asking if I'd like to contribute was also the very first day that I had had one or two hot flashes and I didn't know what to expect yet. So I was glad to have the opportunity to explore what menopause would bring in this comic. My title is men-o-pause, meaning not so much that we should get rid of all the men in our lives, but that it's a time where it's important to critically consider how patriarchal conditioning has affected us and how it might make us feel about um, getting older and no longer being of childbearing age. I am so proud to be part of this. I thank MK and thank all of you for your contributions, which I just can't wait to see. Ciao. Hello, my name is Casey Counselor. I'm a cartoonist, and my comic called Cycles is included in the upcoming uh, collection, Menopause, a Comic Treatment. Now, I recognize that this face right here is probably not the first thing that comes to mind when you think of menopause, and you'd be right. Um, but I'm a trans dude, and actually have many years of bleeding under my belt, and um, also went through menopause when I started hormonally transitioning. So most people who uh, go through menopause, of course, identify as women, but there are folks who are um, non-binary, gender non-conforming and trans who also go through menopause. So lots of interesting things um, around uh, menopause and gender. I'm very honored to be a part of this collection. Can't wait to see it. Hi, I'm Ellen Forney. I'm so excited to see the anthology of comics about menopause. I was excited about it as soon as MK told me about it. Um, I dug out my journal, which has the stuff that uh, was the inspiration for my contribution. I had just written a, um, a journal entry, July 12, uh, 2018, about... Um, feeling really frustrated about feeling so foggy and exhausted and dropping things. And um, mom went through menopause when she was 51. So, and how long does it take? And so I drew um, this drawing, which winds up in my comic and at the top, it says, hey, I'm gonna try to turn this into my comic for MK, which I did. Hello, I'm Rachel House, and I'm speaking to you now from the Feminist United Crone Kindred Society headquarters where I'm holed up during this pandemic. It's a pretty intense place to be, as you can imagine. When it's safe to do so, join us. We recruit, we want you with us. For 
menopausal comet treatment, I've done a version of climacteric calamity, not a happy story, but ultimately empowering. But now I just want to tell you that from the other side of menopause, I've never felt so good in my body. I don't have the disconnect that I've always felt. It's a really, really good place to be, even though some bits of my body are slightly letting me down. It's very good to be here. You'll enjoy it too. Bye. Hi, I'm Kimiko Tobimatsu. And I'm Janisa. Kik and I collaborated on a page together in Menopause, a comic treatment. The page shares a little bit about my experience getting cancer and dealing with the menopause that followed. And I drew the tiny faces of illustrating Kimiko's journey through that hot flash, um, through a hot flash. So I hope you enjoy reading. And... Woo! Hi, everyone. My name is Ann Fox, and I'm an English professor at Davidson College in Davidson, North Carolina. And I'm the author in this collection of hashtag Crockpot Runner, a not finished tale of a midlife athlete. And I first wanted to say how honored I am to be part of this collection since this is my first comic. And so I'm really honored to be alongside all of you and also very grateful to MK for including me. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about the hashtag Crockpot Runner, which is in the title and which you'll see behind me. Um, as you'll see in the comic, I took up running late in life never having been an athlete, always having lived in my head as an academic. And um, when friends started asking me how the running was going, I said, good. And before I could think about it, the thing that came out of my mouth was, I'm kind of like a prop bot. I'm slow, but I get it cooked. And I liked that image so much of just being slow, but juicily persistent, that I started using the hashtag prop bot runner on all my social media posts. And my friends grew to really like it. Um, I had Friends, for example, I had a friend who started calling herself the Crock-Pot Swimmer. I think why it appealed to people is it gave this sense that you didn't have to do things in a way that your body couldn't do. You just, you know, do things in your own time and you get there eventually. And it's a way of pushing back against having to always achieve something super fast and super well. And in disability studies, we even call something like that crip time. So at any rate, um, it's an idea that's brought me a lot of joy. It's an idea I want to share with you. I think it's an idea that's important right now in these times of pandemic and upheaval. You know, we just keep persisting and we will get there. And in the meantime, I send you all my best wishes and deepest admiration. I just want to tell you that I think you're all croc stars. So keep croc potting. Hi there, I'm Leah Jones, and I wrote the story, The End is Not the End. Hi, and I'm Kathy Weeby, and I did the artwork for the story. Which you can see behind us. You can get a glimpse. Um, so Kathy and I met on Twitter, as all good collaborations in 2020 start, and we probably met back in 2015. I was in grad school for health communications, and a mutual friend of ours, Tony Breed, said, Leah, Kathy, you guys both talk about health communications a lot. You got to meet each other. Yeah. One of the things that appealed to me about Leah's story was how it relied on some pretty gross medical care. Yeah. Kathy is the only person who wanted to see the picture of my uterus on a table after it was removed from my hysterectomy. So the story that we collaborated on is a story of how at 40 years old, I was in chemical menopause to get ready for a hysterectomy and talking about like what that meant for my identity as a woman and as a Jewish woman and what it meant for Jewish ritual. And it was such an honor and a pleasure to help bring Leah's story out into the world. I learned so much. My background is very different. I was raised Irish Catholic and got to just completely immersed, get immersed in a different culture. <laughs> we hope yeah. you enjoy it and we hope you learn a lot from it. Awesome. Thank you. Enjoy the book. <laughs> I didn't mean to do the exact same hand. <laughs> I mean, do opposite hands instead. Is that opposite? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Monica. I'm a doctor, a comic artist, and a mother, and someone very fond of graphic medicine. Being part of this project has been a huge privilege. What a team. My chapter 
when my biological clock stopped ticking was really fun to do. But it also has given me the chance to reflect on this time of my life. Fertility doesn't define me. Read us, go on. Hi, my name is Juan Mance and the name of my comic is Any Day Now. My comic highlights the need for more gender inclusive information on menopause. Most information that's available about menopause presumes femininity and cisgender identity. I'm very interested in uh, using my comic to amplify the need for more inclusivity. And I also hope it makes you laugh. I'm very happy to be included in this anthology because I've been looking forward to menopause ever since I heard about menstruation, which was clearly a design flaw. It was a long wait for liberation, but menopause turns out to include the party favor of vaginal dryness. And it happened to me at the same time that I met the man of my dreams. My comic is an ode to estriol, a bioidentical hormone that's been like the fountain of youth for my vagina. 15 years later, my sex life keeps getting better and I never have to worry about getting pregnant. Yay, menopause! Steinberg. I'm an artist from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and my take on menopause has really changed because two years ago I got a hip replacement, and before the hip replacement I couldn't walk and I was completely stiff and I thought it was all about menopause, which is what I wrote about for this book. Since the hip replacement, I feel like I'm 25 years old, and so I'm kind of in a whole new empowered state. I'm loving it. So I went from menopause being this weird, evil thing, which it wasn't, to something that is actually quite freeing. Um, I've been so happy to be a part of this project, and thank you, MK. Right now, at least in the States, we are in what you could call corona pause. We're in the quarantine that comes with the coronavirus pandemic, and I and everyone I know are faced with this putting life on hold. The thing about corona pause is it's been brutal, but in a way, like menopause, it has also created the opportunity to get to know a new self. The graphic medicine community has really given me a way to get through this lockdown state and find some richness and some joy in it. People have come with all sorts of creative ways of keeping going, like in case I take this virtual book launch. And these oh, books. yes, which is so nice. Yeah, shout out to MK for coming together. Yes, a little shout out to MK and to her ability to envision something that is going to create community and create closeness in this time of being distanced and far away. Hi, I'm Dana Walrath. I'm an Armenian American writer, artist, and anthropologist. Now, my path out of academia began in 2008 when my mother and dementia moved in with me, which happened to be the moment that I also discovered the power of comics. Uh, today, I practice a border crossing blend of comics, visual arts, creative writing, and anthropology. And I use this toolkit to take on topics that live at the margins, things like birth and death and stigma and dementia and dehumanization and war and genocide and more. So menopause fits right in with that happy mix. Um, the comic for this volume is called A Menopause and it connects this very personal experience to the environmental crisis, which is fueled by unsustainable unjust extractive approach to nature that's rooted in centuries of white colonialist and imperialistic conquest. The pandemic and the uprising against anti-black and brown racism have really brought into highlight um, just how unjust all of this is and how we And I believe that if we listen to our bodies and to our earth and to nature, we have the power within us to create a world that's filled with peace and with equity. I find the best way with the hot flush is hit the sweat with the sweat. High octane dancing.
Makes you want to read the book, doesn't it? Fantastic. That was wonderful. Thank you to everybody who sent in videos and everybody who's in the collection is represented there, uh, no matter what. Um, so now is the time in the program when I thought we could have a little chat. Um, so uh, I wanted to start with you, Awan. Now you recognize uh, these folks from the video and some uh, kind of visual uh, association with their work. Um, so, so uh, I know you talked a little bit about your comic uh, in in the video, but is there anything else that you wanted to add or describe it or anything else about kind of the process? Let's see. Um, yeah, I think um, it was a, it was interesting to have an assignment. Um, I love getting a theme and then having to think about well, what's my relationship to this theme, um, and. Um, you know, one of the things it made me just go out and say, okay, so what information is there about menopause? Um, and I just had an inkling that um, because it's talked about on commercials in such a gendered fashion, that I would probably find very little that um, understands gender diversity of people um, who may experience menopause in some way, shape, or form. Certainly not any acknowledgement that there are gender non-conforming, gender queer, and trans folks for whom this could be a reality. So um, it was really interesting to explore that and to explore how that has both, um, how that has impacted me as I've visualized my future or simply not thought about it. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, so I wanted to uh, just quickly share um, a screen, if I can, of, um, again, i got to deal with the tech here, see if I can make this work. Okay. Um, so this is the first page. You saw a little bit of that. Can y'all see this? Can you see this window with uh, all the pages of Juan Comic? Yes. Okay. So you can tell. Yes, we can. I mean, yeah, you don't need to be able to read it. What I really just wanted to show was um, this amazing use of color. It's really quite wonderful. Um, and uh, I want to know if you wanted to say anything about that. Oh, sure. Um, you know, color is just really important for me um, in visual art as well as in comics. And um, I like the idea of um, you know, kind of an exercise and how you can go from panel to panel or page to page, recognize all of your characters um, and yet uh, use color to kind of suggests differences in tone, in experience, in time. Um, and it's always, a, it's almost like a puzzle to figure that out as I do different comics. And I always use the same kind of really limited colored palette. And it's, it's a fun way of emphasizing some of the details um, in, um, in a comic, but also asking us to think about how things like ethnicity and gender are not simply about the colors associated with the person. Nice, nice. And then the next question I had, I'm um, sort of a, a question about form, and this one's a little more about content. So um, in this page here, you're saying, you know, I'm sort of, you, you, you use this wonderful thing to wonder about if you'll be too hot to wear your signature sweaters and ties. And um, this book has taken a couple of years to get to print, and so I was just wondering if anything has changed in the meantime, if you have any answers to these questions. Um. Right. Uh, a little bit, but not that much. Um, oh. I did a search just uh, in preparation for this um, event. Um, and uh, what I found was, uh, I know the ties, you know, <laughs> um, and there isn't that much information, but I do, I saw the resources that are out there are great. Um, um, a website called Damn Joan, and I was not familiar with it, but it's pretty cool. And they have a uh, page called, um, the change and they talk to a gender diverse, ethnically diverse and age diverse group of people who have had an end to hormonal, um, you know, the hormones of youth, I guess you could say, for a variety of reasons, surgery, transitioning, um, age. And uh, that was something that was, it wasn't medical advice, but it was something that felt more profound than what I'd seen in other places, which was just people talking about their experiences and what it meant for how they identified. 
Nice, nice. And and that's that's great. So what did you say that was called feel? It's a website called Damn Joan. Great. And um, as in Joan of Arc. Got it, um, got it. And the uh, specific article is The Change. Cool, cool. Yeah, that's one thing that's been really great about editing this anthology is I've come across some great resources and even more have come out even since the book is come to press. So that's been really great. If anybody wants to drop any in the chat, that would be great. So we can all share those. Um, great. So Kathy and Leah, I want to turn to your comic. Um, an end is not the end. Um, so as I asked Juan, in addition to what you said in the video, is there anything else you want to add about subscribing your comic? Um. So I, I think that I think the additional thing to say about the comic is that it's a really small slice of how how uh, having a hysterectomy at forty impacted what I expected my Jewish observance would be like um, if I ever got married. And so there's something in in Judaism called going to the mikvah, which women go to or uh, a week after their period and um, I never knew that I wanted to do that observance until I found out I was going to have a hysterectomy and then it was never going to be an option. So this story, uh, and Kathy and I talked about lots of different ways because I was, I had a nine month menopause and then a hysterectomy and now my ovaries are working again. So I have my cycle now. Oh. So we had a lot to explore and, um, but we went with this slice of how was it impacting my identity and my specifically my religious identity. It looks like we might have lost MK. Uh -oh. um, she's a little frozen, but yeah. uh, Kathy, I think, is there anything that you want to say about uh, the collaboration while we vamp while she gets back online? <laughs> sure. Um, so for me, what appealed to me about the story is I, I think I really like when people, when people talk about when they experience medical conditions and the kind of the day-to-day -day impact or the unexpected impacts of experiencing it. Like, um, I mean, I often come back to the, the diabetes, the diabetes comic that it did about erectile dysfunction and mainly not to keep coming back to that, but that's kind of my, that one's my thing, but it's just like the fact that, oh my God, I'd never heard of this. I'd never heard of this complication. Whoa, this is a new thing to me. So like I, I understood the kind of the physical ramifications of if you have a hysterectomy, but your experience and how it affects your religious practice was just something that just was unexpected to me. And I wanted to, I was really grateful to have a chance to kind of explore that with you and share it with other people to help them anticipate it too. Because I can picture that this maybe is something that, you know, uh, medical providers need to be aware of. Ah, well, we're shifting around. I was gone for a while and now I'm back. <laughs> um, so I hope I didn't miss anything. Uh, uh, did we move on to the next question or are we still on the first one? I think we, we're still we first. were stretching out the first <laughs> one. <laughs> nice. We were vamping for you to get back. Nice so. work, guys. Nice work. Okay, so I'm gonna. Are we okay with moving on to the second question? Great. Okay, okay let's do it. So, uh, so I'm really curious about the collaboration process. I, I'm always fascinated by how people can have one person be the writer and the other be the artist. Um, so, do you want to talk about that? I know we have some visuals. Should I start those? Assuming I can stay online. Yeah, let's give it a go. Sure. Let's... Great. Okay, so we are starting here. And as, as you as you pull these uh -oh. up, what else? Oh, this um, one's the last one. Can we go back to the that one? Yeah, that's the first one. Yes. So as Kathy and I were starting to kick this around, we had actually been pitching a different comic to the nib that was about my fibroids because fibroids were why I ultimately needed the hysterectomy was 
they were misdiagnosed. They were the size of a like two pints of ice cream. My uterus was huge and it was um, diagnosed as doesn't even matter. It was my rheumatologist diagnosed my fibroids, which is the wrong doctor. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was because I didn't know because none of my girlfriends were talking about fibroids. I wanted to start talking about it a lot. And so Kathy and I were trying to find ways to tell that story. And then when we landed on this one, I wrote an essay. And Kathy, you can take it from here. I did, I did the easy part, which is write the words. <laughs> that's, that's one of the hard parts. Actually, I mean, I don't agree. To me, writing is the easy part. <laughs> but, but yeah. But so we kind of had this, we had this story already in the pocket about, which was the angle of fibroids. And then NK, when you sent out the email about, hey, who wants to be in this Menifels anthology? You know, I thought of Leah, like, oh, wow, you know, that was a, that was a part of the story as well. So what if we kind of re re retweaked it? So if you can go to the next image, um, for me, my, my process is very, it's very logical and very just, very just, taking what the existing text is, turning it into bullet points, and then figuring out, okay, of all those bullet points, how much can fit in one page? It's very, very chunking. Um, I often go back to my undergrad degree is in computer science. And so I think of the waterfall methodology of software development, which is you go from one phase to the next phase to the next phase, just like a waterfall goes over a cliff and goes down you never go back. You're always like completing phase after phase and always progressing forward. It's not the best, they don't recommend it, but you know, it's just kind of like, it's the way I go. Cause it's just like, okay, I do this, I do this, I do this, then we are done. So we went with the bullet points. And then if you can go to the, the next slide, um, actually the next step was uh, figuring out how to draw Leah cause she's the main character in the story. So we gotta come up with some sketches of how to depict her. And then... This is the best way to get an avatar is to become <laughs> friends with the cartoonist and have them send you sketches of ideas of how you should look. It's way better <laughs> than any online uh, avatar building app. <laughs> oh my gosh, Leah, do you want to hear something that somebody actually only just asked me recently and I realized I never ran it by you drawing the story. So um, MK, if you can go to the next page, we'll talk about I'll, I'll talk about it as we go along. So this was kind of the next step after doing the bullet points. It's like, okay, how much fits into a page? This is what the page look like could be at. And I've done, I've read comics and I've done comics for so long that it's just kind of like my intuitive, it's just an intuitive language. So I don't, I can't like advise or teach people how to do this, but I just think of like, that's how much space can go in there. That's how much can fit in that space. Okay. And so just kind of mapping out how many pages we can, like, how this is going to look. And then the next page um, is going on to, okay, so just kind of the thumbnails are like, okay, what's gonna, the text is gonna go here. Okay, picture's gonna go here. Yeah. So Leah, somebody asked me this recently and I realized I never ran this by you. As I was drawing the comic, there's the scene on page two where you actually go into the mikvah and you immerse yourself in the water. And I have sketches of like, I guess I'm drawing Leah naked now. And I'm like, this is weird. I don't know about this. I'm very uncomfortable doing this. Okay, <laughs> I guess we're going to do a zoom in on Leah's face. And somebody and somebody asked me recently, like, oh, how'd she feel about that? I was like, oh, God, I never, I never ran that decision by her. I actually don't know how you felt about that. I don't know if you wanted to be depicted like full body naked in that picture. Sorry. Well, I, I'm the one who brought you a story about mikvah, which is a full body naked experience. So I was comfortable with it. Okay, but yeah, but I never, I never ran those. Yeah, I never ran those images by you. There it is on page two. I just like this is weird. Full close up, man. I'm not drawing. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, we're not going. We're not going to see downtown on this. <laughs> this is kind of weird. So, but I should have asked you that. I never asked you that, and I regret that now. So now I know that for my next collaborative project. That's fantastic. I love that. I love that. I love, I'm such a process nerd. I mean, I think many cartoonists are, and it's so interesting to see how people work, especially in collaboration, which I think is an extra layer of challenge. Um, mm -hmm. How does that compare, Awan, because you know, as cartoonists, we always get asked this question of like, what comes first, the words or the images? Uh, you know, that's sort of this cliche question of like, but do you have any thoughts seeing what you just saw in terms of your own process or?
I think that's either a Kathy or an Awan question. No, that was an Awan question. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I think you're muted. Yeah. Sorry about that. If I wasn't. Yeah, I think you're. I think you're muted, Awan. Hmm. Don't think I can unmute. Whoops, that didn't work. Hmm. I don't think I can unmute you. It's that little box as you hover over your face, it comes up a bright. Is that where mute is? It's just not working. Okay. Maybe, maybe you can drop an answer in the chat, perhaps, if that's not working. Now. Um, okay. Um, so typing fingers means we're going chat. That's good. Um, uh, yeah. So people in the comments are saying, you know, I love seeing, uh, I love seeing the, the process and all that. That's really fantastic. Um, so, uh, I think that's it is I know I'm, I'm trying to stay to time cause there may or may not be something people want to see after this. Um, so I want to stick to time. So I wanted to leave the remaining time for any questions. Uh, yeah, please chat the answer. I'd love to hear about that. Um, if you have any questions, um, please, um, I think there's not a separate question thing. It's all the chat, right? That's how I, I understand it. Yeah, I think we just lost a one, unfortunately. MK, there, there is a separate. So right underneath, um, so if you look at by the book, mm -hmm. And so like ask underneath that and to the right, there's ask a question. Got it. Okay. So we have some questions here and oh, I love it. People could vote on the questions. This is so cool. So we have, um, we have one question that's risen to the top um, that shows uh, that has two votes and it's a question from Kevin. Is there a difference between menopause in the U S versus a country that has national health care? Um, we, that's an interesting question. Does anyone on the panel have insight? We have perhaps people in the group with us that might be able to answer in the chat who might be in countries with national health care. Um, I know we have an international contingency here tonight. Um, and so does anyone, in, I, should, I should ask, does anyone on the panel want to answer that? I, I think I suspect what it comes down to is that different countries, there's obviously like what is covered by your healthcare system. There's what is, um, Monica. Yeah. Monica, um, national healthcare is better in every way, but They're I think, in Canada, right. I think there's probably what is the popular treatment at the time, right. That we certainly had a couple decades when it was just, have a hysterectomy, get it all out, and that's menopause. And now there's different understandings of what menopause can look like and how people can be supported with hormones. And what I think is really great is that you selected comics from such a, so many countries and so many people talked about their different medical approaches to menopause. So I think there are answers in the book. So everybody should buy a copy of the book. <laughs> nice, nice pivot. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> Um, yeah, and also check out the chat because we have a lot of great uh, authorities on, on this subject that are joining us here tonight, which is really wonderful. And yes, welcome back, Juan. <laughs> um, okay, so we've got questions. We've got four votes for a question. Oh, we already had that one. Uh, three votes for the question, what health concerns do you think would benefit from similar treatment as you all, um, as you all uh, use this book? Multiple approaches, experiences, multiple viewpoints. That's from Aaron. So what healthcare concern do you think would benefit from a similar treatment that you all used in this book? I think that, gosh, there's probably a lot of things. Um, some things that come to mind for me um, would be uh, things like uh, disability, right? Um, mm -hmm. Disability community people. Uh, so... I mean, there's just a million things, um, but the chat is calling to hear Awan's answer to the previous question before we move yes. on. Uh, the question was, did you have- oh, Is that the question about process? Yeah, the, yeah, the question about process, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, you know, I, um, I drawing is really what I do. I'm more of 
um, an illustrator than everything else, or at least that's how I came to comics. And so I love to, I start by just kind of envisioning a couple of scenes related to um, the uh, topic. For example, this comic, I envision that moment, uh, which if you buy the book, you'll see it. I'm sitting with a bunch of my colleagues, the window is open, it's winter time and I'm freezing. And one of my colleagues, no one else is cold. And they, you know, one of my colleagues says, you will be warm one day too. And, um, you know, that really, is, that scene is where I built out from uh, in coming up with the comics and how we all came of age. And now we're at this moment um, where life is changing, where menopause, we're all approaching or going through or just finished menopause. And, um, and it's, it's just, it's kind of cool to have this cohort where we're all kind of moving through life in this way. Yeah, yeah, and and the, the resources are increasing. Yeah, um, but I love that idea that like that thing that happened was what kind of built the the whole kind of idea for the comic, right? This one moment kind of spurred the whole thing, which is really tremendous. Um, I know Brian Feast has talked about how just going to his mother's chemo and sitting there and sketching her was basically what started all of mom's cancer. I think that's really really neat. Um, so we have a couple of answers from the chat to that question, going back to the question about what other treatments, uh, um, chronic pain, um, mm -hmm. as we mentioned, chronic pain. I think uh, we got a couple of people already starting that collaboration, which is great. Yes. And then one that came to mind uh, from some work uh, uh, my friend Sarah Levitt is doing is uh, uh, an anthology of comics or really kind of a comic collection like this around grief and grieving. Uh, because I think in a lot of ways, it's something that is um, stigmatized and not talked about and also varies so much in the experience and unpredictability. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, MK, just to kind of jump on this, but taking a different tangent, jumping on my pet hobby horse, is that I would love to see not so much about a medical condition, but I would love to see an anthology of stories from healthcare roles who don't often get the respect they deserve. And for me, you know, it's like the front desk admins, the custodial staff, the housekeeping staff, the medical translators, the people, not doctors, not nurses, not medical assistants, love all y'all, but the people who are doing the lower, kind of the lower tier in respect roles, but yeah. keep the system going. Yeah, Absolutely. or honestly, bill, billers, the financial side, I would happily read a, uh, an anthology about the financial side of healthcare and stories from them. Because the more I work with that in my day job, the more I'm just like, oh my God, this is so deep and this runs so strange. Yeah, thank you. That That's absolutely right. I mean, you know, like even just talking about COVID, you know, you hear about the doctors and the nurses, but I keep thinking those respiratory therapists are in all yeah. those rooms and we don't talk about respiratory and, and the people cleaning those rooms and yeah, yeah. pharmacists, librarians, yeah resources all that yeah i think that's a good, so my that, cousin the radi my cousin the radiology tech you know radiology right no it's happened for her yeah no that's absolutely right so you're in charge of that one okay great got that taken yes. care of um fantastic uh okay so let's feel for, yeah so often without ppe right um mm -hmm. let's, let's answer that question um let's see we can take one more and it's gonna go we, uh, we've gotten that process one. Um, we've gotten that one. Next one with the highest amount of votes. Um, okay, so unquestionably, uh, men should learn about this topic and support it too. What might you suggest is the best pitch of this book to male readers? Anyone? Well, I think say, um, in terms of oh, oh um, in terms of perspectives, um, the diversity of perspectives in this book, um, I think, makes it possible for a lot of things that um, say um, someone who's identified as a cisgender man or you know anyone who identifies as distant from this experience can find out a lot of answers without having to actually ask people, which tends to be a really uncomfortable thing. You have to do a Google search and you know hide search results if you you know this is i think the appeal to curiosity um do you ever want to talk to a whole bunch of people who have about menopause this is your chance to have all those conversations but you can have them in the privacy of your own home by supporting a really awesome book yeah yeah absolutely um, it's, that's it's great like, 
I always say to my medical students, like, you know, it's not so much that reading a book like, um, you know, My Degeneration about Parkinson's is going to teach you everything you need to know. It's just going to help you to ask, like, informed questions. And I think this book can do that for, for people who love someone going through the, this sort of challenging time. It's like, you know, you can read about a symptom and then say, hey, is that something you're experiencing? Or tell me about what you're going through, right? Kathy, were you going to say something? No, just kind of um, just echoing the same point. I love that idea of like, are you too embarrassed to ask people questions face to face? Read this book instead. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And also, you know, one of the goals was to make it, you know, I mean, I love that it's a book that has the word menopause pretty prominently on the cover, right? Like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna talk about this now. Like, this is a thing we are going to talk about. We're trying to sort of change the conversation, right? Um, I saw a suggestion, uh, a couple of suggestions in the chat, going back to the last question about other topics. Um, someone mentioned maybe first periods uh, or PMS and all that. Well, I'm happy to say, that I think there, if you just Google that, like comics and menstruation, there's a tremendous amount out there right now, which is really great. But yeah, I don't know that there's a, a great anthology book. So yeah, those would be great stories too. Yeah, great. Thank you. All right, well, I promise to try to keep us on time. Um, so, and I, we're already losing our UK contingent, I see. So uh, thanks a lot, you guys. And, and Spain, thank you so much for showing up and staying up. It's really late there. It's like one o'clock in the morning, maybe two. Um, and uh, thank you all for being for uh, coming here today. I definitely want to thank Penn State Press. Uh, I want to thank mm -hmm. Women at First for providing this opportunity for us to have this party. And um, yeah, buy the book. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. This was such a good time. And thank you, MK. MK, this is amazing. And you did such a, you did, I think what people will see is the amazing job you did with the the video, the book is a thousand times better than the video. So like oh. all the all the like care you put into piecing those videos together is just exponentially true in the book. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. How fun. It's so fun to see so many people in the chat interacting yeah. with one another. That's great. That's great. I wonder if the other cool. could save this chat. Mm -hmm. um, is our Women and Children First moderator with us still? Well, we still have 100 people. That's oh, awesome. that's awesome. <laughs> wow. I know. I just want to sit around and brainstorm other anthologies all night. Right? Oh, right. And oh, you got right. Call her whoever wants to do a thing on Duper Trends. <laughs> I'm on do what? Trends. <laughs> on um, what? It's that, you know, you know that hand disease, that kind of that totally bullshit hand disease I've talked about before? It's the comic I did for Corpus, the uh, anthology. Oh yeah, yeah. It's um one where it's like the 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 cords and stuff in your palm thicken and it pulls in the fingers. So you might have like lumps in your hand or like you can never straighten this finger. Just period. That's it. I and just had a friend who had to have surgery for that. Damn. I hope it's successful. Uh, somebody I know has had a bunch of well, no, somebody I know. My mom. We did the comic and corpus together. Yeah, my mom has had a bunch of treatments and I've got she's that. I've got she's got an aggressive up. hardcore. It just comes comes right back <laughs> yeah so yeah well, like same I, thing I as, um, it's not the same thing as trigger finger right i don't think so this is um this is like uh genetic it's they don't really know what causes it it's very like genetic usually here's the thing usually old white dudes get it <laughs> so um heads up yeah. older white men in this conversation uh keep an eye out on your hands if they start itching or if you start noticing lumps or you know if like can't straighten that finger go talk to a go talk to your doctor but um that's no that's it it might be related to other stuff but what's especially interesting and then i'll stop talking i swear is it's one of these like <laughs> systems biology things where there's no one particular thing that causes it but the guy who gives like the guy who's like one of the main research dudes who gave a big lecture i saw about it says it's he calls it a condition of the seed and the soil so it's like having you might have the propensity for it already in you. And then maybe there's that summer you went rock climbing all the time and that kind of set it off, you know, oh. like, yeah, like I did a whole bunch of digging in my garden that one summer and oh no, look what started, you know, something like oh, that. Yeah. So that's, dude, that is one reason I don't play video games. I am petrified of doing stuff with my hands. So I'm like, sorry, dude, I love video games. Sound amazing, but I'm not, I can't mess things up, man. These are my, my livelihood. Yeah. 
yeah, talk to me in another uh, 10 years. That's when it starts to kick in. I'm not there yet. Ugh, you get the perimenopause and the duper turns. It's kind of bullshit. <laughs> I don't think I don't think those necessarily come like as a package deal. So I think you're all right. We'll, we'll see. That's like the right age range for my people. Got it. Got it. Um, yeah, but all those anthologies, man. Now I want them all. You know, like right? we got to get yeah. people to commit. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, uh, all right. So people asked for some resources. I two I threw two that I have recently really gotten excited about. Um, Hot Flash Inc. Uh, is a woman who's living in Abu Dhabi, and she's doing really cool newsletters every week. So you got to sign up for that. Um, oh, cool. It's not really a website, but just if you Google Hot Flash Inc. And she did an interview with me. And then the Wolfer. I don't know if you guys know the Wolfer. It's an online community for um, for women that has tons of great resources. It started out as a um, started out as a Facebook group called What Would Virginia Wolf Do, and then it just turned into this thing called the Wolfer. Nice. Well, yeah. Cool. cool. Wow. All right. I think we're done. Thanks, MK. This was awesome. No, oh, good. Good, this good. Really Hopefully cool. we'll do a few more of these. This was really fun. I'm so glad you put the book together, MK. This is going to be so meaningful for a lot of people, and especially just the people who don't often see themselves reflected in comics and being able to see themselves reflected, I think it's going to be so important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. All right. Do we just... Say goodbye. <laughs> Bye, Monica. Good night. I think so. Bye. Thanks for coming, night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Thank you, everyone. This was great. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. <laughs>